The Raspberry Pi is one of my favorite computers ever. A single board machine that you can fit in your shirt pocket, it costs less than a video game to buy, and with the latest Raspberry Pi 4, it can now be clocked up to two gigahertz with a quad-core ARM V8 processor. What is not to love? Now, I've done videos on the Raspberry Pi before. It's no secret that I'm a massive fan. In fact, I've probably got around six or seven different models around the house. And although the official Raspberry Pi OS is decent as a Linux distribution, and a lot of people just stick with that, or they run something like OSMC or Libra Alec if you want to use it as a media center. Today, though, we're going to have a look at a few of the lesser known options and exploring some alternative operating systems that you can try on your Raspberry Pi. And I'm mostly going to be using the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B for this video, but a lot of these operating systems I'll be demoing should work fine on the Raspberry Pi 3 as well. So let's kick off with something a little bit quirky, Raspbian XP. Now, if you're nostalgic for the days of Windows XP or even Windows 95, try these custom Debian-based distributions from the Pi Lab. Complete with the classic Bliss wallpaper and an imitation of the Lunar theme, or at Fisher-Price Windows, as we used to call it back in the day, it has a few features that will make Windows XP fans feel very at home, including a start menu, a Windows Explorer-style shell and icons, and it also includes lots of pre-installed open source and free software, including LibreOffice, which works as a full Microsoft Office replacement and is bundled in this distro, and there are also a bunch of emulators installed, which means all you have to do is drop your ROMs or your image files in of your favorite retro games, and they're pretty much good to play straight away, including systems like the Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy, DOS, MAME Arcade emulator, and even the Sega Dreamcast. And they also bundle Box 86, which means you can play a lot of classic PC games on here too. Running on the Raspberry Pi 4, the speed of all the bundled emulators is actually pretty decent, and it's actually playing Dreamcast games at a mostly solid 60 frames a second. And one of my favorite features is the included Windows 98 emulator in this package. Now this runs on the QUMU or QEMU platform, and it is essentially a fully set up Windows 98 environment, and you can launch it directly from the Raspbian XP desktop. While admittedly, it doesn't exactly fly in terms of speed, it probably is comparable to the Pentium 2 machine that I used to run this on back in the day. And that they've installed a few classic games that you can play in here as well. Very cool. Now having a network attached storage device or a NAS drive on your network is very handy. And the Raspberry Pi 4 makes a very affordable home solution if you want to roll your own. Storing all of your documents, pictures, movies, and music that you can then stream across your network to any device in your house is very useful indeed. An open media vault is designed primarily to be used by small offices, but it's very simple to control and install on your Pi at home. All you do is attach your storage and then administrate it from a simple web interface and you're good to go. A really simple and powerful way to set up a small home NAS drive without needing a lot of complex networking knowledge. Now, I'm really going to be showing my age here, but when I was a kid, most home computers booted into BASIC when you first turned them on. A programming language that was designed to be easy to use and was great to get kids into coding. Ichigo Jam Basic brings that back to the Raspberry Pi and allows you to run the version of Basic designed for the Ichigo Jam Kids PC. Just download it onto an SD card and then your Pi will boot straight into Basic, just like its predecessor, the BBC Micro, used to back in the day. And this is great if you've got kids and want to get them into programming. There is actually a programming network that they can join and share their projects online. Very cool. Volumio is an open source audio file music player, and it's designed to play all of your music in high quality from any device with a browser. Now this is designed for people who really care about audio quality, and it was made to offer up high quality uncompressed audio streams reliably, but also it's very flexible. It can act as a single digital audio player for all of your music on your network drive, MP3s, FLAC, WAV, AAC, and a lot more as well. And you get UPnP, DLNA support, AirPlay, Spotify, and web radio stations all in one place. 
You simply host it on your Raspberry Pi and then access it from across your network using the very intuitive web interface. The Commodore Amiga is my favourite platform of all time, and if you watch my channel regularly, you'll be well aware of that fact. And luckily, it's getting easier by the day to emulate your old Amiga setup on a Raspberry Pi. AmiBerry is an optimised Amiga emulator for ARM-based systems, and it brings you the highest performance Amiga emulation, be it a classic Amiga 500, a 1200, a CD32, or even a higher-end model equipped with a 68040 and a graphics card. It really does cover it all. And I'm running the brilliant Pi Amiga pack on top of it. Now, this is a 30 gigabyte pre-installed image, and it comes bundled with a load of games, demos, programs, and lots more as well, saving you the hassle of tracking everything down and installing it all yourself. All you have to do is supply your own Kickstart ROMs, which can be bought from Cloanto for a couple of euros, and then it boots straight into the Amiga workbench for hours of endless Amiga retro fun. The original ARM operating system, and something that is very nostalgic for me, and probably for most 90s kids who grew up in Britain, as this was the operating system that we used in school. Originally born on the Acon Archimedes computers, and first released in 1987, it was designed to run on the then new ARM chipset, which stood for Acon Risk Machine, and it lived inside the Acon Archimedes computers. So it's really got a long, interesting history, but with the Raspberry Pi essentially being made as a modern-day Acorn-inspired machine, RiskOS was one of the first operating systems that its creator, Eben Upton, wanted on the Pi. And you can actually hear more about that on my interview with Eben on my Retro Gaming podcast. And RiskOS is still in active development, with modern features like a package manager and internet connectivity built in, and lots of applications that you will no doubt remember from back in the day at school. RiskOS has always been a very solid and well-designed operating system, and despite the over-reliance on using the middle mouse button, which feels a little bit unnatural to people who've never used it before, it is a really interesting OS to try out. And it runs great on the Raspberry Pi 3, with a beta in the works that fully supports the Pi 4. Hopefully that'll be coming soon. And as someone who always enjoyed using the Acorn Archimedes and was a big fan of RiskOS as a kid, it is lots of fun to be able to experience it on an affordable platform like the Pi. Now, if you're technical enough to be watching this video, I'm sure that you're familiar with Chromebooks, but you can actually turn your Raspberry Pi into a Chrome desktop machine with Chromium OS. Now, this is the open source version of Google's Chrome OS. And if you haven't tried it before, essentially the entire operating system runs within the Chromium web browser. And after doing some initial setup and signing in with your Google account, you're then greeted by its very minimal user interface and the majority of the screen is dedicated to running the browser. And at the bottom, we have a section that expands to launch your most used web apps. And the ones I've got in here are all Chrome extensions. There's also a section for exploring your downloaded files, which of course you can also link to your Google Drive. And applications are installed from using the already familiar Google Chrome Store. And there are some very basic settings that you can do and customizations, for example, changing your backdrop wallpaper, but apart from that, it really is just the Chromium web browser running at boot. But it is great if you want a really minimal system with little setup, and of course it makes a perfect operating system for a kid's machine where there's not much to break. GenPy64 is a 64-bit version of Gen2 Linux for the Raspberry Pi, and actually it runs really nicely on this Raspberry Pi 4. And what I love about this distribution is that it comes with heaps of pre-installed software that's all set up to run straight out of the box, including graphics applications, the LibreOffice open source Office Suite that is, of course, compatible with Microsoft Office. They've also bundled the Kodi Media Center, all set up and ready to configure and run. And getting started with it is really simple. All you have to do is write the image onto an SD card and then you're good to go. If you're nostalgic for your childhood console, or maybe those long, lazy Saturday afternoons that seem to last forever in your local arcade, RetroPie lets you relive those days in this really slick and powerful all-in-one retro gaming system. Bundled with lots of emulators for many classic systems, it really is a case of just supplying your own ROM files and then launching them from this very intuitive menu. 
and it can emulate all kinds of classic consoles, but my main use for this is for the brilliant MAME arcade emulator. Launching all these incredible old school arcade games from the menu and having all of the arcades that you used to pump your parents money into as a kid ready to play for free at any time at all and it really is something that would have blown my 10 year old mind as a kid. And I've got my Raspberry Pi 3 inside a monster joystick for that real arcade stick feel. Now it's actually made with genuine arcade parts and it makes a really nice way to experience these classic games. And you can even hook the Pi up to a retro CRT monitor for that real authentic arcade feel. And of course you can plug in extra USB controllers for multiplayer games, but having all of these games on a system that fits in your bag that you can take around your friends' houses is just incredible. And next, we're going to check out possibly the most alternative operating system that you wouldn't expect to be able to run on a Raspberry Pi. And I just wanted to take a minute to say a big thank you to my good friends at NordVPN who've made this video possible. Now, more than ever, we really value our online privacy and using incognito mode in your browser really isn't a solution. Did you know that even in incognito mode, your internet service provider can still see everything you do online? And there are even horror stories of ISPs selling your personal data to advertising companies. Plus, with lots of us having been in lockdown over the last few months, you might have completely exhausted your local Netflix library. But using NordVPN, you can connect to other Netflix servers around the world and check out content that you can't watch on your local service. NordVPN reroute your internet connection through their super fast servers and with double data encryption on all of your data, that means you're fully protected at all times. You can even connect when you're traveling, on public Wi-Fi, in coffee shops or at the airport. And it works with most operating systems including your smartphone. They've got unlimited bandwidth, no data logging, so really there's no excuse for you not to be using it. And it's so fast you can actually just leave it connected in the background and forget about it. You don't even realize that you've got it on. And they also improve your online experience with their CyberSec suite, which blocks ads and protects you from malware and other online threats. Now NordVPN have been kind enough to support this channel and I'd really appreciate it if you took advantage of this amazing offer and get 70% off the normal price of a NordVPN subscription. That means you're paying just $3.49 a month and they've generously given you an additional month completely free. Now all you have to do, and of course you'll be helping out the channel by doing this, is head to this website right now, nordvpn.com forward slash Dan Wood. Use my name so they know that I've sent you as an exclusive promo code to claim this massive discount. Enter Dan Wood in the promo code box and protect your online activity today with the only VPN to get all the green checks on PC Mag, our good friends at NordVPN. All right then, and number one, the most alternative operating system to run on your Raspberry Pi, and it is Windows 10. Now, this is something a little bit quirky and not really usable at the moment, but it is actually possible to run Windows 10 on your Raspberry Pi. Now this is due to the fact that Microsoft actually make an ARM version of Windows 10 and the Pi community have, with their genius, managed to get this working on the Raspberry Pi 3. And with a bit more effort you can also make it work on the Pi 4, but that is kind of a work in progress at the moment. And I've managed to get this up and running with USB supported on my Raspberry Pi 3. Now you've got to remember this really is a proof of concept at the moment and there is quite a long involved process to get it downloaded, get it built and then the setup takes ages to get up and running as well. And then when it does, the entire thing is extremely slow. And I mean, clicking an icon, it can sometimes take several minutes before it appears. Navigating the system is really slow as well and to be honest, it's nothing that you're going to use in day-to-day -day life. But the fact is that it does actually run and as more powerful Raspberry Pi systems with faster CPUs and more RAM eventually come along in future years, the foundation has already been laid so over the next few years it could become a realistic operating system to use day-to-day -day on your Pi. But for now, it's a cool experiment to try out with a lot of future potential. So if you want to try it out for yourself, I'll link up a guide in the video description so you can give it a go. Let me know how you get on. So there you go, 10 alternative operating systems that you can try today on your Raspberry Pi. Now, this is by no means meant to be a definitive list. So if you've got any suggestions of operating systems that I should try out, I'd love to hear about those in the video comments. 
And did you know that I also do a weekly retro gaming podcast every Friday? The Retro Hour, available from all your favourite podcast clients, or you can download it directly from my website, theretrohour.com. And you might find the interview that we did with the father of the Raspberry Pi, Eben Upton, really interesting, that was released a couple of weeks ago. You can check that out on all the other episodes on the website right now at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here's another video of mine you might find interesting. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And I'll see you in the next vid.